Welcome back everyone. Today we're visiting Chateau de Duc de Bretagne. That is also known as the castle of the Duke of Brittany. We're going to be looking at a bit of the castle's history and the grounds which are free to enter and also looking at the museum which does have an admission charge and it goes all the way from a time before the castle was even built exploring Nantes history all the way to World War II. Let's go check it out. The first ducal castle, a castle that's a residence of a duke, was built here in the 13th century. That castle would last two centuries before being demolished to make way for the current castle, which was built in the late 15th century by Francois II, who was the last duke of Brittany, and then later added to by his daughter Anne of Brittany. Francois II wanted to make the castle both a military fortress, which could defend against the king, and the principal residence of the ducal court. Enhancement work to the castle was later continued by Duchess Anne of Brittany, twice Queen of France through her marriages to Charles VIII and Louis XII. Her influence can be seen in the sculptural decor marked by the first signs of the Italian Renaissance, such as the dormer windows overlooking the main residence, as well as the coat of arms. Following the integration of Brittany into France in 1532, during the 16th and 17th centuries, the castle became the residence of kings of France when they visited Brittany, and later a military barracks, an arsenal and a prison. It endured countless transformations and considerable damage in its history, fortifications, a fire in 1670, construction of a military saddlery for storing artillery equipment, and an explosion in 1800, just to list a few. It was listed as a historical monument in 1862, and sold by the government to the city of Nantes in 1915, before becoming a municipal museum in 1924. Even during World War II, changes were made, with the occupying German forces building a bunker in the courtyard. This castle is a beautiful sight in the heart of Nantes. And now we're going to have a look around the museum. This sword was discovered here during an archaeological dig. This is a statuette of Anne of Brittany's death mask. She owned this castle. And over here, this reliquary contains her heart. There's this cool interactive board, and you can just tap it and bits come up. And it can be put into English, which surprised me. When we go back to the early bits of history, you can see where the King Henry's were rulers of Brittany as well. All the way up from Henry II to Henry IV. So it's just interesting seeing how England's history ties into Brittany's history. This model here shows Nantes Castle and the city walls of Nantes many years ago. And apparently it used to be full of rivers, so all these were like little islands, and you've got to imagine rivers going through all the networks there. And the model is from the 13th to the 16th century, so three centuries it was like this. This area was used as a prison, and you can see some of the names etched into the wall, and that's effectively graffiti from the prisoners. just contains things from around Nantes as well so this is part of an old chocolate factory here a very ornate building it's the old castle decor there Jules Verne was born here in Nantes and the city was an inspiration for a lot of his work so quite rightly they have one of his books here this is called a binu and it's basically a small bagpipe they use here in Brittany these are from the slave trade this is a slavery neck shackle
While we're on the note of slavery, Anna has also taken me on this trip to Nantes to the slavery memorial. Now Nantes played a huge part in the slavery trade. The port here, which is behind me, imported so many in the trade. And actually behind me, all these little white marks on the floor are names of all of the vessels that took part in that trade. We're also going to have a little look into the memorial before going back to the castle. Top floor, look. Found the toilet. <laughs> They've got these big books about there in French, English, and Spanish. And there's a bit about destroying the city walls of Nantes. Unlike a lot of British cities where they just fell apart over time and were never repaired, here they actually actively took them apart to expand and modernize the city. This whole section is about the revolution. This is a model of the famous Bastille prison. So when the news of the storming of the Bastille reached Nantes, the locals revolted and stormed this castle and took control of it. This is a painting of one of Nantes mayors and as you can see it was destroyed by revolutionaries and then put back together. I'm impressed whoever put it back together managed to do it. There's no information about who put it back together or when. But you can just see the damage where like swords and things have cut through it. Massive figureheads hanging from the ceiling. They've got board showing you specific parts of the castle and what was done there. So they saw like how the servants would add flowers and crockery silverware for the day, beat matches out. Uh, and apparently there were over 300 Queen's House staff here at the time. It's likely the palace roofs and towers were used for sleeping quarters for the staff and they were poor conditions, so just straw and things to sleep on. This portrait represents, and I quote, free women of colour, so it's due to the end of slavery. This is from a whaling ship and it's used to well, boil fat down to oil. You can see it pours out there, and a whale bone hanging above it. You can see in the model here, just there, the factory that we saw the piece of upstairs. And that part <laughs> here is the build building that is staying still today. And that has been, uh, you can still see that tower, and the whole uh, building is an exhibition place uh, now for an art gallery. These were all labels that used in that biscuit factory for transporting them. The Louvre factory is clearly very important to Nantes because there's so much about it here. 
These are all the molds for making biscuits, including this massive rolling pin, which is capable of making loads of biscuits. Look at it. So the Lou factory originates in Nantes, and they export all over France. This painting is to do with social injustice and how shame to those who don't rise up against social injustice. And the signature down here says to my sons to give them a conscience. And it's signed 1910. This is a theatre curtain from the war, and all of the pictures on it symbolise the industry that was helping the war effort. This is an early wheelchair for those who lost their legs in the war. And we move on from World War I to World War II. This translates to the Germans are victorious on all fronts. This little brooch represents all of the Allies' flags. This flag was made by women in Nantes when the British came to liberate the city. This poster is talking about a, a German that was assassinated by French resistance and they killed 50 French civilians because of it and then threatened to kill 50 more should they not come forward and say who the person who killed the German was. And they offered 50 million francs to anyone who came forward. I'm not sure how, but the person was found, so the other 50 weren't killed. But there is a monument in Nantes to the 50 hostages that were killed. So these are uniforms from the Holocaust, concentration camps. All three wearers of these uniforms survived, liberated by, well, Giselle Fraud, we don't know. It doesn't say who liberated him, but he was liberated. And the gentleman at the back, Roger, he was liberated by the Americans. Janine, she was liberated by actually a French resistance movement, a group, a charity, who still exists today. And there's all the information down here, all in French, which I've had translated to me, about the stories, how they were captured, what happened to them. Janine here, on the left, was due to be hanged the next day before she was liberated, so incredibly lucky to have survived that ordeal. This letter states that they have successfully removed all Jews from Nantes just the evil things the Nazis did. That brings us to the end of Nantes Castle. It's really well worth a visit. The castle itself is free to enter the grounds. To enter the museum, there is an admission charge for that, but that's still worth it as well, going all the way from before the castle to World War II. And it's not just the castle, it's all about just Nazi history. So the, the slave trade, the building of the castle, uh, the revolution, which is great. You don't really get that in British Museum, so that was brilliant to learn about. There is some stuff in English, especially when it comes to the castle itself. I feel like the actual castle history is kind of a side note. It's hidden away at the side, it's kind of little plaques to learn about it. And it's actually about Nantes itself and even France. Um, Anna, who I'm here with, has been translating a lot of it for me, said that some of the information left you asking more questions than answers, like what date did this happen, where this happened, and some of the stuff was left a bit ambiguous. So maybe there needs to be a little bit more information there to fully round off the educational side of it. But. Otherwise, yeah, I think I'd like to have seen a bit more about the actual castle, historically. There's stuff on the website, but not in the museum. But as a museum for Nantes, it's fantastic. I think we'll end it there, guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you next time. Bye!